In this video, we're going to take a look at how we can find a least common multiple, which we'll eventually call a least common denominator when we're talking about fractions, of two numbers. To establish a pattern for this, we want to first look at 8 and 6, and how we found a least common multiple of 8 and 6, without using the mental math method of saying, what are they both, what can we divide by both 8 and 6. But instead, I want to look at the process behind it, when we want to find the least common multiple of 8 and 6, we first find the prime factorization of 8 and 6. We can find the prime factorization with a factor tree. 8 is 2 times 4, 4 is 2 times 2, so 8 turns out to be 2 to the 1, 2, 3, 2 to the 3rd power. And 6 is simply 2 times 3. The way we use these factors in order to find the least common multiple, or least common denominator, is we say, well, from the first number, we have a factor of 2. The second number, we see a 2 factor, but we don't need to list it twice. It's already there, but we do have a new factor of 3. And then we can go back to each factor and attach to each factor the highest exponent that we see on that factor. For example, we see the 2's, the highest exponent on 2 is a 3. So 2 cubed times 3 will be our least common multiple, or 8 times 3, which is 24. 24 is the smallest number that we can divide by both 8 and 6. We can use this pattern of attaching the highest exponent to each and every factor to do an expression such as 4x squared, y to the 5th, and 6x to the 4th, y cubed, z to the 6th. At this point, we'll go ahead and do the f numbers mentally. We know that 4 and 6 both go into 12. The least common multiple of 4 and 6 is 12. And then we see a factor of an x, a factor of a y. From the other one, we already have x, we already have y, but then there's a factor of z. Now we go back and attach the highest exponent we see on each factor. With x, the highest exponent we see on there is a 4. With y, the highest exponent on a y is a 5. On z, the highest exponent on z is a 6, and we have our least common multiple of 2x to the 4th, y to the 5th, z to the 6th. We can follow the same pattern with polynomials. The trick is, with polynomials, we might have to do some work to identify the factors we need. You guessed it, we need to factor each polynomial. x squared plus 2x minus 3, and x squared minus x minus 12, factoring the first one, multiplying to negative 3 and adding 2, would be 3 and negative 1, so that is x plus 3 times x minus 1. And on the other one, we're multiplying to negative 12, adding to negative 1. It would be negative 4 and 3, so it's x minus 4 times x plus 3. Again, these shortcuts only work because there's a 1 in front of x squared. And then for the least common multiple, or least common denominator, we have an x plus 3 factor, an x minus 1 factor, an x minus 4 factor, and then there's no need to list the x minus 3 again, it's already there. And so this becomes our least common multiple. Because there's no exponents in the factor, no exponents in the least common multiple. Let's try one more. In this one, if we factor the first one, multiplying to 25, adding to negative 10, it's negative 5, and negative 5, which match, telling us we have a perfect square x minus 5 squared. For the other polynomial, we're multiplying to 45, adding to negative 14. That's going to be negative 5 and negative 9. So we have x minus 5 times x minus 9. And we see we have a factor of x minus 5. Don't need to list x minus 5 again, and x minus 9. Attaching the highest exponent of squared on the x minus 5, and we have our LCM.